Hi guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, July 10th, and I am back for my stitching update. It's been two weeks since my last one. So I hope you've all been well and you've been stitching, making, creating all of the things. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast about cross stitching and sometimes quilting. However, if you are not interested in seeing the quilts, I do show those in the second half of my video and I let you know in plenty of time that they're going to make an appearance. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. So hello, how are you? I hope you've had a great couple of weeks since we have last sat down to have a chat. It has been a, it's, my two weeks started off as being very crazy, wild, all the family here to this past week being very quiet and it's very strange. So uh, in my last video, I think it was right in between, my brother Brad had been here for a week and then they all went over to the beach and then they came back and so we had two full weeks uh, with them. So the whole entire family had, you know, had been here. So the house had been full of all this life and laughter. And then it went to crickets. It's been very, very quiet. Um, as far as my stitching goes, I feel like I maybe get a solid C plus. I think there was a couple of days. Well, there was one day for sure that I didn't stitch anything. And that was the 4th of July because we stayed up until July 5th. Uh, we kind of had a whole entire party that day. My brother Matthew pulled his trailer over and so they camped and we, we basically just partied. We tie-dyed. Uh, the kids, it was just a wild, it was a wild day. There was just so much activity. It was, because usually what happens is we go over and we do um, the parade over in Mount Angel and then later on we'll go back to Mount Angel and we'll do the fire or we'll see the fireworks show and all of that got canceled. So we had to kind of regroup and I think we I think we managed to fill the day full of fun activities. Um, this visit was a little bit different because uh, usually there's a lot more things to go do but a lot of places are still closed. And I don't even think the, the big outlet mall uh, here in Woodburn is, is open yet. I haven't heard and I haven't really looked into it. So we, we basically just kind of hung around here or we found some outdoor activities to do. Uh, we went to Silver Creek Falls um, and then we also went over to a, um, oh, what is it called? It's a, it is a state park and it, oh, it's called Willamette Mission. And it used to be, back in the day, uh, it used to be a, a, a town, like when the early pioneers came over, it was along the Willamette River, and so they settled there. I don't know if it was a religious community. Uh, I'm not really sure. I probably should have looked, in that for, looked into it before I started talking about it, but it's a big park. There's a lot of walking trails. And so we went over there and we did um, a walk and it was, just, it was a lot of fun. It was a nice day. Our weather here has been a little, a mm, uh, lot of cloudy days and then the clouds will burn off and the sun will come out. So it's it was a nice time. We managed to find stuff to do, keep ourselves busy and it was a lot of fun. And, and it was really sad when they left because we always love having them here. And then it's so quiet and we just miss the love and the laughter and just the light that, that they bring. And so I'm looking forward to the next time we get to see them. I hope it will be soon. Um, it was wonderful spending time with my new baby niece, Madeline. She is so precious and she, she is, she's just so precious. I just, I loved, love spending time with her. And of course with Evan and Zoe, I, they're getting so big. I wish they would stay small forever, but they're just, it was so much fun having them here. And I hope that I will get to see them again soon. Um... This video does not have quilts at the end of it, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, uh, once my brother left, so they left on Monday, and once they left, I had a bunch of quilts to do for clients, but I haven't really had a chance to sit down and work on anything for myself. I did get a few project bags into the shop. They're already gone, which is awesome, and thank you. Uh, hopefully next, in my next video, I will have something to show. I have, um, I, I, I've been asked a couple of different times. I know a, a handful of videos ago, I showed some fabric that I had picked up from, well, right as the shutdown, no, in the middle of the shutdown, I had dro driven in and I picked up um, a stack of fabric. 
and it was uh, uh, Kim Deal's uh, Blush and Blue. And I keep getting asked, you know, when, when are we going to see the quilt made from that fabric? And I promise it will happen. I just have had, I haven't had a lot of time to sit down. There's other quilts that have kind of been in the way and the ones I've been trying to get done, like this one, it took me a while. Uh, and I promise um, I will, it will show up here in one of these upcoming videos. I just don't know when. Another question that I have gotten, and if you've asked it, I haven't ignored you. Um, I just forgot in my last video to talk about it. And that is the scroll frames that I show in my video. So these are um, the lock scroll scroll frames from Artesian Designs. Uh, this particular one, it was the first one I bought, but I didn't really know what I was doing when I ordered. And so I had ordered the sidebars and this part, but I didn't order the knobs. And I, um, the, at the time when I first ordered them, I had a K's Creation lap stand and this would not fit into it. So I had to order some longer bars. And while I did, I went ahead and I ordered this one because I knew I was gonna be stitching Queen of Freedom as well as a couple of other stuff. And I thought it would work perfectly to stitch in this big one here. So this is the one that you've been seeing for the last couple of months. And then about two weeks ago, I ordered the knobs and I was able to put this one together. So I have, I think this is a 10 inch and this, the bigger one is 20, I think 21, 22. And I do know that at some point I wanna get a size in between, but I love using them they have this channel that is here. So this little wood piece comes out and then you put your fabric in here, you put the wood piece on it and then you start to roll it. So your fabric doesn't get, um, you don't have to sew it into, you don't have to sew it onto anything, you don't have to pin it on anything and you don't have to, there's that one, the roll of frames where I think it's got the teeth and you, you pinch your fabric in between the teeth. This one, um, you just stick it in here and it works great, I love it. If you're thinking about ordering, it does take a little bit of time. It takes about two weeks before you'll get it because I think they do it sort of on a, um, as they get the orders and then they, they make them. So you, you'll just have to wait. The most I've had to wait is two weeks. Like from the time that I've ordered it until the time that it shipped out, it was about two weeks. And that was my lap stand. Because uh, last summer I decided to order the Elon lap stand because the K's Creation lap stand I was I was having trouble with it. I couldn't never keep my Q snap in there. I couldn't keep my scroll frame in there. It just I would be stitching along and then it would just fall out. So it was it was very challenging. Um, and I I do like to stitch two handed. And so having the lap stand and the scroll frames and also you can put your Q snaps your hoops. They have an adapter that you'll want to get to put into your Elan lap stand. And then you can use the, you know, the Q snaps. Works great. I've never had any problem with it. I, I stitch with it every single day. It's become, it's become like having scissors. I mean, I, I use it every single day. And so it was well worth the, the purchase price. I sold the quilt so that I could, I could buy it. So I love it. If you're thinking about getting it, I highly recommend it. Um, I know in the beginning when I was first learning how to put my fabric in and then the fabric tension, there was a little bit of a learning curve, but once I figured it out, I, I could just kind of pop them in and out. And yeah, I love using it. So if you're thinking about it, it's a great tool to have. I did get some happy mail over the past two weeks from Joyce. She sent me this beautiful, it's a Navajo rug card. And uh, there was no way to show um, each individual uh, thread that she sent to me. So I just went ahead and I put them all in here, but she sent me this big bag of uh, hand dyed threads, which I love. So thank you so much, Joyce. I appreciate it so much. Every single one of these colors, I need it for something. So thank you so much. And then from, and I hope I'm not saying your name wrong, Audrea. And if I'm saying it wrong, I'm really sorry. I'm terrible with saying people's names. I'm one of these people that when I meet somebody, I have to, I have to say their name three times or I forget what their name is. I'll remember their face, just not their name. 
Um, but she contacted me and asked me if I had the Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. I didn't, and so she sent it to me. And so thank you so much. I love it. I can't wait to get to stitching it. I like that it only has a handful of colors, but I can't wait. I've seen this finished um, a bunch of different times and it's just, it's so beautiful. And so I'm very excited to have it. Thank you so, so much. And then just today from Michelle, who is under the Woolen Willows, she sent me this card, which by the way, um, I think she should start selling her handmade cards because they're beautiful. But she sent me this card and it was a just because, and it is a, so it is, it's either a keychain or you could use it as a floss, a floss bling or a scissor fob. And I think I'm gonna use it as a scissor fob, but it's just her beautiful handwork. She just, she just has the prettiest handwork. I, I just love it. It is so, it is so dainty, so wonderful. And I just love it. Thank you so much, Michelle. I haven't had a chance to thank you yet, but as soon as my video is done, I'm going to make sure that I shoot you out a quick thank you because I love it. And I forgot to show in my last video, you can kind of see right there is a strawberry and Michelle makes these beautiful strawberries. She makes a lot of other things too. She makes an acorn, which I've been eyeballing. Um, there were some stars that were in there. She has a cute uh, pumpkin uh, mini pillow. Uh, just they're, uh, they're like, is it ornies? Is that the right word? You can put them with your, st you can put them anywhere. I mean, I could put this in my Christmas tree if I wanted to. You can put them, it's not a Christmas tree. It's a holiday tree. <laughs> It's a, it's a 4th of July tree, but I could put it here. You can put it in with your cross stitching. It just, it's a little, a little extra something just to add a little sparkle to your decorations. I have one right there. And then this one is on the other side over here, but I forgot to show them in my last video and I love them so much. Like I said, she has an acorn in her Etsy shop, which I have been eyeballing. And I think I might have to go back and get it because it keeps calling to me and I know they're gonna go like hotcakes. And so I, I need to get on the ball. But yes, I love, I love everything that Michelle makes. It's just, she just has the prettiest, the prettiest handwork. I mean, such talent, such talent. I, I just love it. So thank you so much. I'm going to use this as a um, scissor keep. So this is gonna go in the pair of scissors that I have in the thread spool that she sent me. And I love it. So thank you so, so much. And then one other little bit of stash enhancement that I got over the past two weeks, cause I've been very, very good. And this one I just could not pass up. And it was actually here when my last video came out, but I had read somewhere where she wanted us to wait until after July 2nd. I don't know if that's right. But um, Kitten Stitcher had sent out an email and she said that she had this club that wasn't a club, so you didn't need to join it. So you could just, um, you could buy for the kit, but you didn't necessarily have to buy, you didn't have to sign up to get future kits. So whenever she releases a kit, she'll have like X amount. And then once they're gone, they're gone type of deal. And luckily I was, um, I don't know, I was in my email for some reason and I saw it pop up and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go for it because I'm one of these people I procrastinate till the very last minute and I usually lose out. So I went ahead and I got it and it came right before my last video came out and it, come, it comes with everything. It comes with the, comes with the thread. Um, I can't remember what count, 36 count maybe. And then there was some stickers and then there's a piece of wool in there for the top of the drum. And I, I like these little small ones because I, I want to, like Ginger Shawl, she has these cute little areas where her stitching, you know, she, she has all these beautiful like pillows and drums and strawberries and they're in these cute little bowls just kind of in different places. And I really like that and I, and I want to have more of those. But for some reason I keep starting all of these giant projects and I don't really understand why but I really do want some of these smaller things to put in, you know, different areas of my house. You know, here I have like this little tray thing and it would be cute to have like a few little 
4th of July things. So I need to focus more on that or bring some of that into my stitching rotation because I would like to have some of that stuff around my house. But for some reason, I keep picking these giant projects. So that was the only little, little piece of um, a stash enhancement that I've gotten. I've been very, very good. The only thing that I've bought and that's not here yet is I got the beads and the fabric for the Celtic Autumn that I showed in my last video. I enabled a lot of you to buy it and I'm, I'm so happy I'm not gonna be the only one out there stitching the Celtic Angel as well as, not Angel, Autumn, Celtic Autumn. Why do I keep calling it Angel? But I'm glad that a lot of you guys out there are going to be stitching it with me. I love Celtic Autumn. If you want to see one that's um, being worked on right now, um, the Globe Trotting Stitcher, she shows it in her floss tube, which is where I saw she was working on it and she was using Janet Granger's color conversion. And I had already seen you know, Janet Granger's, um, like the Pinterest pins and um, different places, it would pop up from time to time. And, you know, I'd always think about getting it, but I never could quite, you know, do it. And then when I saw Amy, who's the globe, clotting, globe, globe trotting stitcher, when I saw her show it, I, I'm like, I have to do that. I, I had been looking for something after I finished my Queen of Freedom and it was perfect. And so I'm I'm looking forward to starting that and I'm glad that I enabled a lot of you guys also because that means I will have somebody to stitch it with too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up a little bit. I'm gonna go get a drink of water. It is hot out here in this room and I'll be right back. All right, let's talk about what I have been stitching on. So over the past two weeks, somehow, my stitch rotation got a little bigger and I I'm not sure how that happened because usually I'll stick to having three projects going at any one time and I think I have one two three four five right now and I'm I I just don't know um, I haven't really been following any you know it used to be on the weekends I would have my um, long-standing whip and then Monday through Friday, I would rotate between two projects and it's just kind of been all over the place over the past two weeks. Uh, one of the things I only worked on one of the days, the other one I tried to work on it a couple of different days and I ended up pulling out more, pulling out more of the stitches than I was putting in. Um, and then I decided to change out my weekend whip for something else, which you guys have seen. Uh, so I had been asked a couple of times uh, about Brian stocking because it had not been in my rotation for probably a month or more and I did not intend to have it out of my rotation as long as it was because the only way I'm going to get it done is if I stitch on it. So this is Brian stocking. This is out of the Stony Creek, I think it's summer 2015. Yep, summer 2015 issue. It is the Victorian Father Christmas. I gave, um, for Christmas, I kitted it up and I gave it to him because Brian and I have been married for over 20 years now and every year I always meant to make him a stocking. He has this ugly white stocking right now that he's had forever, it's falling apart and I decided it was time that he got his stocking finally. So I started it back in January and I was doing really good. And then somewhere in the spring, it ended up out of my rotation and it never came back in like it was supposed to. So here's my progress so far. Um, I think the last time I had the Santa's face and his beard done and the tree, but this is all new. I'm, I'm not really loving it right now because all of this part in here is all confetti stitching. And I know once I get through that, it's gonna go a lot better. Um, I figure when I get to the page break, which is right down here, I will go back and I will do the back stitching. And I hope you'll forgive me that I left it in my cues or in my um, scroll frame. I usually take it out, but I, I figured you guys would, since I was going to talk about the scroll frame anyway, I figured you guys would forgive me and allow me to leave it in. The only thing that you're missing is up above here, there is some scroll work. So that is my progress. 
and the needle minder is from mad for minders on etsy it's one of my favorite ones i love it always makes me chuckle i am stitching victorian father christmas with all of the called for thread except i eliminated the glisten gloss because it was awful <laughs> to stitch with a lot of the glisten gloss was supposed to be up in the white bird, but the moment, so you you were supposed to, you were supposed to mix the two threads together and then stitch with it. But the thread, the glisten gloss made the thread disappear. And so I could never tell where I needed to stitch next. It would just, it was, it was, it wasn't fun. I eliminated it. I don't think he's gonna miss the sparkle. If he is, I'll just go in and add it in different places. But once I eliminated it, it was so much better and I don't plan on adding it. Um, it also has Mill Hill beads, which I will add when I'm all done. Next up, and what was as my weekend rotation was American Farmhouse by the Scarlet House. I started this one for Stitch Mania last year. I was supposed to work on it over the summer and I forgot about it. And then I found it when I was going through my stuff and decided I needed to pull it out and get to working on it. And this is my progress. So not much more than when I showed you guys last time, I ended up having to unpick half of the barn because I was off to complete rows. And once I got that done, I started working on the barn, the, the, um, barn door and I was working on this while my brother was here I put it in a smaller Q snap and then was working on it at the table and I didn't I really didn't get very far I thought I was gonna get farther but I would end up putting in two stitches and then you know something would happen or I'd put in two stitches and you, you know you're you're entertaining people so you get um, interrupted a lot and so I finally just put it away I'm gonna keep it on my rotation I'm not gonna take it out and I will just work on it here and there. I might, um, see when Ethan was in school, I used to, for like a half an hour, hour every morning, I used to stitch. And since school has, you know, we haven't had school here since March, all of that's kind of fallen by the wayside. And I need to find, I need to, um, instead of working all the way up until I go to bed, I need to kind of cut that out and stop a little bit sooner. So that way I can sit down and relax and stitch. And I need to make myself do that. And I was going to do it last night and I ended up, I ended up not. And yeah, at this point in my life, I'm so far behind. I'm, I'm never going to catch up. Um, I am stitching American Farmhouse on 36 count Ale by Picture This Plus with all of the called for threads except for the white. The called for thread is uh, Weeks Dye Work or Weeks Whitewash, and I am using um, Classic Color Works Bamboo. And uh, Victorian Father Christmas is stitched on 28 count white Lugana with all the called for DMC. Um, there's a couple of uh, fancy floss colors and beads. And then next up is a new start. This is a Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. Uh, I started this one, I don't remember which day, was it the second? So I start, so um, we did a Zoom meeting and it was with Brenda, Carol of the Amazing Quilt Carol, and Yvette of the amazing box of uh, Civil War Reproduction Fabrics and Christy Crosshatch Quilts. We all did a Zoom meeting and we started our Land That I Love together. I don't remember what day it was. I do not remember. And I know it was in the last two weeks. Was it the second? I wanna say it was the second, but I don't know if that was the, I don't know if that was right. Anyway, this is my progress so far. I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count tin roof and it's weak style works and um, I am not loving the fabric. It is very, oh, it's not as like regular linen is a little bit more, um, 
I don't know. This feels very, like when I ironed it, I stretched it out a little bit. I mean, I was able to stretch it back into place, but it's very silky. It's fine. I don't mind stitching on it, but I, I, I get why people in their videos will say that Weeks is not their favorite. I'm curious to try it with the Zweigart base because I think this is their original um, linen base. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. I'm not going to give up. And I'm stitching it with the called for everything. And that's my progress so far. I think I've worked on it two, two evenings. I start, I mean, I just had, when we did our Zoom meeting, I only had, by the time we were done, I had this little bit done. And then I worked, yeah, it must be two evenings because I remember I, I stitched to here and then the next time I stitched there but it's beautiful. I originally had thought I was gonna have to swap out some of the colors because they matched, the, or they look like they were gonna match the fabric. And these are the called for colors. It's a mixture of DMC, and then there's some weak Dye Works and Classic Color Works in there. But it's a lot of fun. I, I am enjoying, I am enjoying it even though the fabric um, sometimes makes me wanna wring its neck. But it's a lot of fun. It's it was so fun um, getting to meet Brenda and getting to meet Carol and Yvette, and we had a wonderful visit. And hopefully, we'll get to do it again soon. And um, I I really do love this sampler. It is so beautiful. And I I know that Carol is. I think she has almost finished this house. They started from the bottom, and and I started from up here. And I can't remember where Christy started. I don't remember if she started here or if she, I don't remember. But it's a lot of fun. I hope I said that that was Tin Roof by Weeks Dye Works. And I didn't say something else. If I did, I apologize. Next up is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Barrick. This is a stitch along that I started, or that we started. Uh, Christy at Crosshatch Quilts and I, we, it originally started out, the two of us were just going to stitch it together because our Queen of Freedoms were finished. And then a lot of you guys decided you wanted to join us. And so we made it into a sal. And the hashtag for that is Autumn Beast SAL. And I think that's right. If I'm wrong, and I don't know why I always struggle with the hashtag, um, I will make sure to scroll it down below if I'm wrong. But we would love to have you join us. It's a lot of fun. I am stitching mine on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha with Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches Floss Conversion that she so graciously shared with us. I love these colors. And the thread bling is from Socks for Mom. And then this one, this one might be a little hard for me to talk about. And so if I start crying, I will pause the video, but this is the um, block six. Is it block six? Yep, block six in the anniversaries of the heart series. I, in my last video, I had not started this one yet. I had just finished the farmhouse and I was trying to decide who the block would be made for. And I was tossing out several um, possibilities, but I, I really had not decided which one to, to stitch it for. And over the past two weeks, our dog Molly passed away. And I decided to stitch the block for her. Knew that was gonna happen, so I had to pause the video. Here are my anniversaries all together. I'm stitching uh, them on a piece of 35 count sand with various uh, flosses. Um, I just kind of decide when um, it's time to stitch the block. I, I will go and I'll, I try to match it to what the picture has. Occasionally I'll, ch I'll change a few things, um, but it's just kind of variety, a, ver a variety of all sorts of threads. And then this is Molly's block. And I, the only thing I'm not 100% happy with is the threads that are around her name. I feel like it's not quite dark enough and I'm, I might wait. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the block 
and I'll start the one next to it and I'll see if um, I'll see if it helps darken up that green a little bit. If it doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and unpick it and I'll put a different color of green around it. I started this the night she died and this is the progress I have gotten so far. The It's been a lot of fun to work on my anniversaries. It is, uh, I went ahead and I am doing it as sort of a history of of my life and so it's got um, my husband's parents, it's got my great-grandparents, it's got my grandparents, um, just kind of it's just kind of a, a little bit of everything so it's my history and I, I am enjoying stitching on it very much. I'm hoping to get this block done uh, well before the end of the month because I have fallen a little bit far behind and I need to I need to speed up a little bit so that that way I can get it done by December 31st. The hashtag for that is BB Anniversaries 2020. If you would like to uh, stitch along, this is the threads. They're pretty mangled. Um, these are the threads that I am using. Um, this is some thread bling, also from Becky at Socks for Mom. And the thread that I'm using for uh, the brat is it, I don't know if it's a, the border around Molly's name is this one. And I'm just, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that it is showing up very well, but I don't really wanna unpick it right now until I get a little bit more of the sampler together because sometimes I thought the same thing about this first block and now that it has other blocks that are around it, the colors are popping out more. So I am just going to wait and see what happens. And if I feel like it's just not working, I will unpick it at some point. But this is my progress so far. And I'm loving it. One, one little bit of um, stash enhancement that I did not show was I found this little ornament. This is what Molly looked like. And so I will stitch this and make it as a Christmas ornament for her. And it's, it's very cute. Uh, Maria had a lot of other great um, charts in her shop. She had a lot of dogs and they were about the same size, just little ornaments. I will put a link to her Etsy shop. I think this chart cost me $1.80. And so I, at some point over the summer, I plan on stitching this when I can get my emotions under control, then I'll do it. <laughs> so I know I completely botched talking about my anniversaries of the heart. Hopefully in my next video, I'll be able to talk about it a little bit better. As far as this video goes, that is all I have to show for these past two weeks. I don't have any quilting, so I will go ahead and say my goodbyes now. If you are interested in seeing what I am up to between now and my next video, you can always follow me on Instagram. I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, or I have a Facebook page, which is Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. Um, of course, I will be back in two weeks for my regular update. Thank you so much for stopping by today, and thank you to everybody who watched my last video. Uh, when I checked it last time, there were 8,000 of you who had watched my video, which completely blew me away. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the subscribers. Just thank you to everybody who comes back every two weeks to see what I'm up to. I appreciate it. You guys are the best. I have the best subscribers. And you make doing these floss tube videos so much fun. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great two weeks. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I hope you have a great couple of weeks and you get lots of stitching done. Thank you so much for being here today and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.